Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, this is part two of American, Asian, Hawaiian, Pacific Islander Heritage Month. <laughs> That's a mouthful. But uh, anyway, I, I want, in my previous episode or my previous blog, um, I spoke about uh, uh, my great grandfather purchasing the entire block. Uh, in a covenant restricted area around Lake Merritt, and, and that was on Santa Clara Avenue. Uh, and, and at the time, uh, uh, 580 wasn't even a thought yet. And, and so, anyway, um, this whole portion of uh, Santa Clara was undeveloped and it was owned by the city of Oakland at the time across the street were the first sets of homes and they they were uh, uh, all had a, um, a n no Asian person or people of color covenant along Santa Clara Avenue uh, early um, in the early days of Oakland and uh, so anyway, my great grandfather uh, purchased an entire block, um, which uh, extended from where um, the uh, 580 on ramp is all the way up to Crescent Avenue. So it was uh, a, a very large uh, uh, parcel of land that the city of Oakland sold off to the Pacific Coast Cannery uh, in Oakland. Uh, and uh, homes proceeded to uh, be planned, uh, five homes. There were five homes uh, that were uh, placed on, on a certain portion of property. And, and I had the documentation, like you said, for 361 uh, for the longest time. And, and when I sold the home, I, uh, I left those documents for um, uh, the new owner uh, of the home at the time because when I sold the home, the home had never been sold previously. It had been lived in and it was lived in by uh, my grandfather plus uh, my mother, my Uncle Bob, and uh, Uncle Jim. Uh, and a majority of them passed away in the home. Uh, my grandmother was uh, uh, not one that uh, passed away in the home, nor was my mother. Uh, but um, uh, my grandfather passed away in the home, Uncle Bob passed away in the home, and uh, Uncle Jim, James Lou, uh, passed away in the home. But uh, we never had any issues with uh, um, weird vibes, spirits, uh, energies, uh, poltergeists or anything. Um, None of our animals uh, sensed anything. So there was peace in, in the home. So getting back to the house, uh, after I got the, the home, uh, there were a, a lot of people who dropped by to give me uh, information about the home, family members like Frank, Frank Lou and his wife, Ann, um, Annie. Uh, so uh, I learned a lot about the neighborhood. Plus there were a lot of... Uh, neighbors who knew and grew up with my family. I grew up with a lot of folks in, in the area. And, and it, uh, what was interesting is that when my um, grandfather and grandmother moved into the home, they were, my grandfather was 19 years old and essentially a homeowner. Uh, and, and the home didn't transfer, actually transfer into his name uh, until 1946. And that's when all the titles transferred um, in and out of the family. And in fact, here's what happened to a majority of the homes. They were sold. 361 was the only one that remained in the family for any length of time until I, uh, I had it. Uh, next door, uh, 359 and 357 was owned by an older woman who bought the properties, two of the properties, 359 and 357, from the trust. And she, she 
uh, told me about that. And, and uh, she held on to those properties up until uh, 1982. Then she sold off uh, um, 359 to my neighbor, um, Frank and Charlene. <laughs> and, and that's how they came into uh, ownership. Uh, but it was real interesting because the the uh, uh, lady who bought those two uh, from the trust, we knew it, it came from a, a wealthy family in Oakland. And, and uh, my understanding from, because you know, she had spoken to my grandfather, not m so much my grandmother because my grandmother didn't speak English and the, uh, the uh, Portuguese woman who uh, lived there uh, became good friends with with uh, my grandfather and so she knew a lot about him and she knew that that was part of the family there and, and so it, it was just nice to have confirmation and then uh, the other thing that uh, I had a visit during uh, the reconstruction the remodeling of the home between 2002 2004 and, and in 2004 I officially moved into uh, 361 Santa Clara because uh, uh, more than 90% of the work had been completed. Uh, the only thing left at the time was uh, completing the kitchen. And, and so uh, we were in the midst of doing that, but we could move in. And, and then that way we could uh, leave uh, our lease that we were at uh, which was getting ridiculous. Uh, I, I was really unhappy. Uh, I stayed at the Essex, yes, the Essex in Oakland, uh, number one lakeside. Uh, we were there for two years during the remodel from 2002 to 2004, uh, officially moved into 361 in uh, July of 2004. And, and uh, so anyway, we got that and got moved in and very comfortable uh, and I had a lot of visits uh, uh, from a lot of different uh, uh, organizations and, and uh, uh, history uh, uh, buffs around Oakland about the homes and, and so they, they learned a lot about me and also my great grandfather and, and also the cannery of our family and so there it was real interesting. One morning I, I had just gotten out of the shower. I, I'm completely naked. I'm upstairs uh, and I walk into the front room, the front bedroom where I had uh, some of my other clothes and, and lo and behold, there's a whole group of people. There's approximately 30 people across the street all looking at me. <laughs> and so fortunately, I, I'm way up high and, and uh, from where from the street level, I'm actually three stories uh, at at height, and plus the new windows uh, has a film in there, so they really couldn't see me, but I could see them very clearly. But anyway, uh, what was interesting? There was a walking tour going on by the Oakland Historical Society. Uh, I received a, a notice or, or a mention. Um, about a week previously, but I completely forgot about it. And, and they talked about that they were going to do a walking tour on Santa Clara Avenue, talking about uh, the race uh, covenants that were in place at the time and how my great grandfather was able to place five homes on Santa Clara Avenue in the midst of racial covenants. And, and broke all the uh, racial covenants. And in fact, there was uh, what we, we could call white flight from the area. And it, it changed from predominantly white. It moved the borders of, of uh, the Caucasians to uh, the Piedmont border, which was uh, not that far away. It was only six blocks away uh, from uh, um, where uh, my grandparents' home eventually ended up being. But, uh, and, and in that flight uh, of uh, the Caucasian, the, the racial uh, segregation that was going on, Chinese were able to uh, come in uh, to those homes. Uh, they rented them to 
uh, the, the Chinese folks uh, in the beginning. And uh, they say, well, you all can be together in rent. And, and that was fine. And then in, uh, in 1945, 1946, all of those racial uh, boundaries, all those illegal um, covenants uh, and laws were thrown out by the United States Superior Court and, and, and deemed illegal. So all of those... Uh, uh, boundaries were, were thrown out. Uh, Asians were now allowed to declare their citizenship. Uh, they could also own property for the first time now. And in 1946, uh, all five of those titles, which were challenged by the United States government uh, as uh, United States uh, property, uh, and then uh, turned back by, by the British government because uh, the Bank of Canton, which held our, all of those titles in trust for our family, uh, denied the United States government's uh, claims to the properties. Uh, and they said, this is the property of the British uh, government. Uh, and uh, they were on a whole different uh, monetary system. They used uh, sterling silver. And so uh, all of our assets, uh, the Bank of Canton, was backed by sterling silver. And when the United States uh, crashed, that's what, how we were able to keep uh, our money, a lot of our, our monies. Uh, we were able to keep our properties because we weren't a part of the financial collapse of the United States at the time. Uh, and in 1946, when all the, uh, those uh, uh, illegal uh, laws were uh, removed, that's when uh, our family was able to uh, get those uh, titles out of uh, trust in Hong Kong. And uh, in most cases, they were sold off through the trust, and then the trust distributed the money to those families that uh, sold uh, their properties. And uh, 361 actually went into uh, my uh, grandfather's name and my grandmother's name for the first time. That was the first time a name, an actual name had gone on the title, 1946. And it remained there uh, until I put the property up for sale in... Um, 2007. So uh, a lot of history. There were a lot of things that uh, I left as uh, artifacts and uh, uh, proof that that home had never left the family. And it was part of the legacy here in Oakland. But again, it was a real surprise coming uh, into the front room, seeing 30 people all staring at me, looking up and staring at me like, what in the world is going on? And then uh, I could hear uh, the, the uh, tour guide uh, for the Oakland uh, Historical Society talking about my great-grandfather, uh, the cannery. And, and then after they moved up the street, you know, they looked at, at all five homes and saw how uh, each one was, was very similar. Uh, you could tell that the same architect was used on all of those homes. Uh, and then how uh, things uh, were very different back in those days and how my uh, grandfather, my great grandfather was able to get around all the racial laws uh, of the time. And that was the help with uh, Mayor um, Sonny Jim Rolfe of San Francisco, who was the mayor at the time, who made a call to the Oakland mayor, Frank Mott. And, and asked him to, to do a favor to sell a plot of land to the uh, Pacific Coast Cannery. Uh, the owners of the Pacific Coast Cannery are looking for property to build homes. And, and so uh, Mott agreed to that. And, and uh, my great-grandfather uh, found this plot of land in a place that no realtor would even uh, walk him to or drive, or, well, at the time it was walking, uh, 
And um, so they wouldn't even show him the property. But because he already knew the, the area, uh, that um, he bought the property. And, and uh, since it was outside of all of those racial boundaries of the time, there was nothing that those covenants or those uh, um, laws did not apply. And, and no matter what they did, there's nothing that uh, the neighborhood could do, uh, but it did change. Uh, it changed from uh, predominantly all white to uh, at the time, predominantly all Asian. And, and then that's where you got the big influx of uh, Asians to and around Lake Merritt because of my great grandfather. Along with that, we have the Oakland Chinatown. We also have buildings in uh, the uh, history in the San Francisco Chinatown, which I'm uh, I'm excited to uh, do another walk with my cousin Bruce uh, next month in the month of June because uh, we're going to re uh, rewalk the the footsteps of my great grandfather through uh, San Francisco, his buildings and and the history, the very rich history that he brought to San Francisco with his canning uh, uh, company that originally started right there in the San Francisco Chinatown and then moved over uh, to the Oakland uh, side with the first all concrete building in the city of Oakland. So anyway, uh, a lot of uh, those, uh, the information that I grew up with, you know, I, I took with a grain of salt because, you know, I don't really had it. I have any evidence back then other than just the words of uh, my my parents, my mother, my grandparents, my grandfather, uh, Uncle Bob, who was uh, a family accountant in a lot of the businesses, plus uh, um, my uh, my brother was a, a little bit of help, plus the neighborhood, the neighbors uh, that lived there that grew up uh, uh, in in the neighborhood saw me grow up and, and spent lots of time with my grandparents. So uh, this is, and and now having to really experience everything as it is, it, it's quite humbling uh, to uh, know how involved and how in depth uh, my uh, ancestry goes back right here in Oakland. And, and um, I'm proud to call myself an Oaklander, a third generation Oaklander, and, and I never left Oakland. And, and I'm back to help Oakland get back to the prominence that it once had. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.